Design is the holy grail of life. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And in today's episode, I will be speaking with Nunzio and Mark DeSantis of the intergenerational award-winning architecture firm, Nunzio and Mark DeSantis Architects. So this is a father and son duo leading the practice. Nunzio's career began over 38 years ago at HKS, where he created the HKS Hospitality Group. Since then, he has completed more than 60,000 hotel rooms throughout the world and is largely credited with having made Cabo San Lucas into the luxury vacation destination that it is today. Mark's classical training at the University of Notre Dame and his three years of design experience at Robert A. M. Stern in New York brings a structured and classical perspective to the boutique hospitality firm. During his time at Robert Stern, Mark worked on high-level residential projects, including the design, interiors, and details of 220 Central Park South, 550 Madison Avenue, and 555 West 22nd Street. Most recently, Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects received international recognition for their work on Bishop's Lodge, Auberge Resorts Collection, a legendary landmark reimagined and modernized through a $75 million renovation. Nunzio and Mark were honored for their work on the historic resort as winners of Architectural Digest's 2022 Great Design Awards. In today's episode, we will be discussing the energy created by this father and son partnership that blends the seasoned experience with young, fashionable and hunger and bucket loads of talent. We talk about how to create a youthful team with the best real life experience in the business. I think this is really, really fascinating topic. Um, And we also discuss how to master a niche and why focusing on one single sector has actually allowed um, Mark and Nunzio and and their team to weather recessions and develop deep, robust relationships with extraordinary clients. So, Loads of gold nuggets in this conversation, um, a real practice to to watch what they're doing in the hospitality sector. So sit back, relax and enjoy Mark and Nunzio DeSantis. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Mark and Nunzio, welcome to the Business of Architecture. How are you both? Excellent. Ryan, thank you for having us today. We're very much looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, we're really excited. Thank you so much for hosting us. We're, uh, we're delighted to kind of share our, our journey, our, our challenges, yep. our successes, and certainly, you know, uh, anything that you might find of interest. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, I'm very excited to be speaking with you both. Um, you guys are the partners at Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects. Um, you're a practice based in Dallas, and you've got an extraordinary portfolio of work, particularly you know hospitality work and serving some really extraordinary high caliber clients and this is no this is not an easy sector to be such a kind of you know dominant um and well positioned business and to actually get success in there so i i think it's very exciting i'm very interested to hear how you've cultured how you've nurtured those kinds of relationships with those clients and how you've actually been able to to build the business to success so welcome to the show and i guess the first question is how did the business begin what's the What's the, the inception story? Well, I, I, I'm going to jump to that, but I want to take a, a second to kind of thank you for your segue. Um, this business is, is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it's, it's fashionable. People think it's lovely and wonderful because most people kind of find hotels and resorts, wonderful escape, a place to you know, kind of live a second life. And uh, 
the reality is it's very challenging. Uh, most architects in the world think they can design hotels and design resorts because guess what? They all stay in them. And that's why there's uh, oftentimes a little bit of a calamity in our business. But uh, we do one thing and one thing very well. We have chosen to clear the fog, mm -hmm. focus on one direction, and be the very best in it. And that means we don't dabble in office buildings or or you know hospitals or education or resident. We we do hotels. We know how they function, why they function, what they need to function, and and then we have this incredible ability to make it beautiful. The the uh, what I what I'm probably most proud of ourselves is taking a very complex operational building and bring it bring delight and joy and gracious and approachability and glamour and fashion to it and uh, make it economical for mm -hmm. someone to build it. So we're we're really thrilled about that. Thank you for for opening it up that way. And you know. Uh, I became an architect a long time ago. I won't even go into that. but uh, uh, And I think yeah, everybody that has a strong connection with family, uh, there's nothing more important than those children they bring into this world. And, uh, you know, one of those great things is I married an extraordinary woman. Just um, she really should be on the show. Uh, she is also an architect. So uh, I started my career working for her, actually wow. uh, working under her, and it was a, it was. A, a, Is this a how you met? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, that's that's another podcast. That, <laughs> smooth, that smooth work there. Yeah, smooth. <laughs> marrying, marrying your boss. I like it. <laughs> well, I think she is still very much in charge. So uh, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to mention is that. Uh, we we had two wonderful children. Mark is the eldest, uh, and I call him Mark Jacob. So you'll hear me say Mark, Mark Jacob, MJ. Uh, and uh, along the way, you kind of have hopes. You have hopes to someday have an opportunity to do something together that forges a bond and a relationship and memories that are unbelievably um, valuable as as people. What you know, what we really do in this world is create memories and these these heartful kind of connections. So MJ decided to become an architect. He went to a great school. He left uh, that that period in his life and went to work for a great architect up in New York. So yep. there's great pedigree. You know, he grew up in a house that every time we went on a vacation, it was a field trip. I was walking off the guest room, measuring the height of. You know, the shower seat, it, it was terrible. Poor guys, they were constantly uh, on a field trip. But so, you know, I had been a part, I'd been one of the uh, senior partners at a very large firm that did, did everything, did every kind of building type. And over that period of time, you know, you kind of find who you really want to be. And I had the great luxury to. Uh, decide to start this firm and reached out to MJ and said, you know, I think we can do something very special, very personal, mm -hmm. something that we can chart our own co course. And, you know, it was the right time in his life to move back from New York, come to Dallas. And we kind of went at it blind. Now we had tremendous relationships. We had a portfolio that, you know, we had touched great properties all over. And, mm -hmm. But what, what, what I didn't have, I realized more and more every day once he joined. It was that useful uh, interpretation, that useful kind of understanding of what the next generation is looking for, what they've seen, how they've perceived it, and how you, how you distill it, edit it, and push it forward. And it's been, you know... It's been probably one it on a personal note, it's, it's the highlight of my life from a yeah. professional standpoint. So it's been fun. He's learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And every day is a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I cast a very big shadow. And it's it's remarkable how 
a young person can find their way to the sunlight around the edges of this big shadow. And uh, it's, it's fun to watch. And it's fun to be a part of. And it's extraordinary. But tension is certainly there often. And then yeah. you might add to that, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, for any, any architect that grew up with parents who are architects, you realize how romantic of a profession it is. And it's hard to justify doing anything else. My mom's an architect. My godfather's an architect. My dad's an architect, of course. And the romance that swirls around it, especially in the hospitality industry, uh, is infectious. And so I grew up um, always kind of hanging around the fringes of that, but had the opportunity to really be introduced during school. Spent a wonderful time up in New York and uh, fell in love with it all over again. Mm -hmm. And when my dad called up and said that, you know, he was thinking about starting his own kind of gig, of course, I, I jumped at the opportunity. I flew down immediately. And, uh, you know, it, it was really interesting. Those early days were fascinating to me. And I look back and it seems like just yesterday, finding the space to uh, kind of begin the few employees that we had, how we had to ramp up very quickly. It was all uh, it was all whirlwind at the time, but it was um, a very special time of our lives. So, mm. anyways, um, I couldn't be more excited it, to hear from my dad. It, it's it's really wonderful to see a kind of father son duo, if you like, running uh, at the, and at the helm of a of a business. Um, what are some what some of the the kind of real benefits of being in a partnership like that, and also some of the challenges? Because I I would imagine that. It's it's not without a unique set of challenges. Um, let's see. And family can be tough. They yeah. tell it like it is. Where, where, <laughs> do, where do we begin, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, super personal. That's that's first yeah. and foremost. When you're in, when you're in a family business, uh, and that's what I believe we're in. Our office is kind of a bit of our family. So at mm -hmm. every employee that we've added has become another member of our family. It's grown over time. Uh, but we are super, me and my dad, super honest with one another, mm -hmm. almost to a fault. And uh, most other partners don't have the opportunity to work with somebody that they can speak their mind to. Yeah. For better or worse. <laughs> you know, sometimes it can be uh, almost a little too honest and you get into the weeds of things and you really get up to your elbows. But I think the person personal touch is actually what drives us to be more into the work that we do mm -hmm. and more personal with the work that we do because we're in it together and we can lean on each other and we're, you know, we're always there for each other, even when it gets tough. And that's not always true with other types of partners. Uh, you can be at odds with other partners and, it can get really ugly and you may never mend that relationship that can, you can't mm -hmm. do that with your father. So, yeah, uh, I think that's what makes it very special. You know, this is different than a typical practice in business of architecture. Mm -hmm. We, we, we have decided to not be in the business of architecture. We have decided that first and foremost, we have strongly leaned on a philosophy that we are in a people's business, people serving people, loving the people that we, we choose to surround ourselves with and those that we serve. Uh, Ryan, if, if you get the people thing right yeah, and you get under each other's skin, in other words, you kind of fall in love with each other, uh, your employees work harder. You have a greater respect. You want to be around each other. You want to be in front of those clients because you have this panache, this cachet between one another, and you share and you banter. Uh, there's no arrogance in our practice. I don't stand for it. I love architects, but the arrogance that oftentimes rides with our practice, but we, we, we have diminished. So we are real people working hard, caring for our clients and caring for one another. And I guarantee you, if you get your, your people business down, the rest works out. Mm. Clients love you more. The work is better, less drama, all those kinds of things. And, yeah. and I think 
I think we're very good at that. And I think I, it might come back to the culture of where I come from. My Italian culture here is, we, you know, our office has one very large kitchen in it. And, you know, the old Italian culture says, manja, eat. Well, we eat what we work, what we design. We eat each other. We, we love life. And hospitality is life. It's an extension mm. of your life. It's it's a foothold on your life. But MJ is absolutely right. Our, our business is different. We aren't. We want to make money, but that isn't the profound overriding density of our work. We're doing this for another reason. We really are trying to become, you know, internationally known as one of the very finest hospitality firms. And there's fewer every day that yep. focus on this business. And so we have to be candid with one another. We have to say that's not good enough. Or, yep. uh, you know, let's not take that job. We turn down a lot of work because it just doesn't make sense for us, even when we need the cash. And I, I, I like that position. When I, when I was a senior partner at a firm that every dollar mattered and everything had to come in, it's nice to know your lane and be mm -hmm. very good in that lane and not, not have to do things for all people. So, um, I'm extraordinarily excited about working. Uh, the one thing I did want to say is, you know, the other thing that makes this business, our practice, our sense of place and what we do different is there's a window for me. There's a, there's a, there's a, there, there's a purpose here different than many other practice. There's a window that I'm going to be around. And my effort is to also create the youngest, most vibrant, most experienced hospitality firm led by people that are in their 30s, that have more experience than architects in their 40s and 50s, because all we do is touch hundreds of hospitality projects. So the Marks, the Dannys, the Scots that are in their 30s mm -hmm. are the best in the business. And they may walk into a room and a client goes, who is this young guy or young gal? And just get out of the way because they're going to be quite surprised. It's really so much fun to watch. Okay. So I hope, that, I hope that, that kind of well, describes they, that's, that's, that's very inspiring to hear. And, you know, just the, the, the kind of the relationship between you two, a father, son, um, kind of duo, if you like, is there's a lot of integrity around that, which I can imagine very, it's very, um, reassuring for lots of clients you know there's a kind of solidity that it kind of uh, it, it communicates and, um, and I'm sure many people you know that's the kind of relationship we all want to have with our fathers is being able to to work side by side it's something it's something very very special about it um, and I love what you're saying as well here about actually creating a vibrant young team that's actually got real life experience doing what, you know, actually working on these kinds of high-end, high-caliber projects. Right. So my, my next I'm really saying unmatched experience. Yeah. The kind of work we do, the volume and the caliber, the mm -hmm. biggest, most incredible pro, uh, firms in the world would die to have our portfolio, our clientele, and it's all led by young people. It's, it's remarkable. So how did you start to get into this deep niche and and how did you avoid you know particularly when you first started the company how did you avoid taking on whatever projects were to hand was it a very was it did you sit down together and say okay look we're going to dominate the hospitality sector or was it was it more organic how did you come up with this focus it's it's a it's actually a really easy question to answer uh, and my dad should really lead this question because he founded the hospitality firm at his, his old uh, leadership role was the commercial sector. Mm -hmm. And um, he found he found that he was really, really drawn to hospitality. If you haven't noticed yet. He's he kind of has a, a larger than life personality. Uh, so it, 
it really fit in. He fit in with everybody that he met. People fall in love with him. And uh, his name in the industry grew. They, all fall, right. they also fall out of love with me. So, you know, it, <laughs> it works both ways. So uh, his name grew in the industry quite rapidly. And uh, his practice was notable during that period of time. So when he left, all those clients, uh, we haven't had to do a lot of marketing. Um, my father is re- very well known in the hospitality mm-hmm. world. And we've had great luck with people just calling up saying, we've heard of you. We love, we would love to work with you. We'd love for you to kind of lead us down a path. Uh, take a, a piece of dirt that's nothing right now and turn it into something lovely. And um, so that's been really remarkable. But I think the most challenging thing is the focus on hospitality because we've had those same clients who fall in love with us come back to us and say, we want you to do an office building. We want you to do a hospital. We want you to do, uh, who knows, an education facility. And it's not that we don't want to work with them. It's not that we don't love working with them, love the opportunity. We want to be the very best at one building type. We choose not to be um, mediocre at a lot of things. We want to be great at one thing. And that focus is something that we have to remind ourselves every day of because it would be easy to get lost in, in the kind of great other opportunities that we have. So um, my dad can probably talk a little bit more about his his history in the hospitality world and the, the great success he's had before our, our office. But um, that's really the reason and the opportunity we've had to do what we're doing now. You know, it's a little unfair for us to talk about our success because we, we came out of the out of the starting gate with just so much, you know, industry rep, such a reputation of the industry. So yeah. we don't market, we don't make one call and ask a client for a job in the six years we've been doing this, our work comes to us. Mm. And you know, that might be one of the greatest compliments that one can ask for. Um, but I do think that it's really important to understand when we talk about focus, that's what we have decided to be. Whether you're a footballer or somebody in some sport, you're not really good at everything. So we've decided to be very good at one thing, and that is know the brands, know the uh, the differences between you know a luxury resort to a mid caliber resort to a a very tall, slender, urban lifestyle building to a, mm-hmm. you know, a luscious, romantic, gorgeous location, culturally driven project. So uh, we we um, we've decided the ups and downs of our business. We're going to just we're going to just we're going to work through. And by mm-hmm. the way, that decision has made our lives difficult. Let's yeah. just. Let's just be quite frank. When COVID hit, guess what people quit doing? Quit going anywhere and quit going in hotels. So, yeah. uh, but, you know, during that period of time, our clients saw that as an opportunity to really benefit from us. And we slowed it down. I, I, I think the great, the great people in the world have the ability to slow the pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take the speed and slow it and see it in a, in a magnificent way that others may think is a negative. Mm-hmm. We took COVID and that may have been the greatest period in our six year career as a firm. I think it established us. It made it, it grounded us. We weren't off to the right. We were, we were foundationally more acute. Beautiful and, and 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 graceful with our work, and you know, so I, I'm I'm really happy about that. You know, firms all over the world let people go, had to had to reduce in size during that whole period of time. We only let two people go, and we're in the hospitality wow. business. That that talks about the caliber of our clients. Well, it's interesting because I would have I would have asked the next question would 
you know, would have been about recessions and the dangers of being solely focused on one particular sector. And we see, you know, so many architecture practices, they diversify their portfolio. And we had this conversation about diversification and how important it is and how, and how it's, you know, that's the way to weather, weather a recession or any kind of economic downturn. And here, what you're saying is actually the depth of expertise was in part the thing that kind of kept you going through the recession and that you were able to find opportunities when things you know on the outside or on the surface of it, it, it you know to many people they'd be like oh that sector's that's going out that's that sector's going down and you want to touch on this and then i'll add to you on the back side because i've got something i want to add but you, you go first yeah I, I think uh two two things to say you know we we had it going into this uh recession we had a tremendous amount of work Our mm -hmm. we had we had a, a full book full book and a lot of that work stopped uh, don't kid yourself the recession especially for the hospitality industry was very tough nobody was traveling hotels were not full so why would a client want to go out there and build another empty hotel when their hotel that they own right now is not full not not operating at capacity the, the outlook was grim, okay? But a lot of our clients were deep into projects. They had invested a lot of time, a lot of money, and they're smart people. They know that this industry is coming back with force, whether it's in two, three, four, five years. And by the way, it takes that, that amount of time to build a great hotel. It, it does, it's not a six-month project. It is a year, a year and a half, sometimes longer with the planning. It can be some of our projects have been with us from the beginning of our of opening our doors. So, um, you know, we, we did a lot of smart things at the time. We realized that we were going to have to battle our way through. So we made some great deals with our, our clients who are our partners at times. Um, we reduced fees. We made it manageable for them to continue work through that period of time with the idea on the backside that we would be able to have a, a piece of work in our portfolio um, and allow them to get work done at a reduced rate. So it helped them out too. And um, that wasn't true of every project. We had full blown projects during the time, but um, we had to do some things that just strategically kept our employees in our office. And um, the, our employees, you've already said it, are, they're kind of like family. We love everyone. When we walk in, we say, how are you doing? What did you do this weekend? How's your wife? How's your girlfriend? Did you go to the new restaurant this week? What kind of hotel did you stay in? Uh, did you find something wonderful about life? Tell us. We, 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 we want to hear about who they are and, and what their aspirations are. And um, we, we put a lot of time and energy into training our employees, just like every other architecture firm out there. Um, but there's some tremendous value there. And I believe we have some of the best people in the business here. My dad alluded to it. They touch so many projects in the hospitality world. They're experts in their own right. And to lose them would have been tragic. Yeah, It would have been tragic for them and it would be tragic for us. So we did everything in our power to get by, sustain the people that we have in our office, make sure that they had a wonderful life through COVID. Um, as best as we could. And I think we did a nice job of it. We managed to keep the majority of our employees and uh, we came out of COVID stronger than we were before. So, you know, Ryan, I, I will tell you that I'm about ready to say something that you may find uh, a little garish or a little strong. Yeah. I have never, ever worried about a recession. In the 40 years I've been doing it, it you know, whenever when the economy is rolling and and everybody is super flush and moving at you know white hot speed, everybody's doing well and everybody gets in each other's way. Uh, I have always looked at a recession as a bit of a as a, a reset 
and a bit of an opportunity to get people out of the business that they found themselves in because everybody was just able to do everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's something extremely healthy about a recession. It takes players that aren't very good and weeds them out. It's just Mm -hmm. like, you know, a great team, a great team's going to win. And because you have, you, you get, you, you got what it takes. Uh, so, you know, I'm okay with doing one thing and doing one thing very well and managing the risk along the way rather than right now, by the way, we're a whopping 28 people. That's it. We can't fit another person back here. And guess what? You're perfectly fine with it. Most other firms would go find another location, add another 15 people. But today, not only are we in the, in the only the solely hospitality room, but also we don't produce our own work. We have chosen to, to do one more thing, and that is reduce the services of what architectural firms do. Uh, so we don't do the – in 90% of our projects, we don't do the big production of the document. We do – we focus on what is not commodity-based. What is, where their value is, and that is design. Design is the it is the it, it is the holy grail of life. Mm-hmm. It is what people long for. How you produce it, we'll let people that are more equipped with these technical guys and all the quality. We're going to finesse a project. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a body. And we're going to craft it. We're going to we're going to spend the time on the detail that brings it to life, rather than understanding how a bolt is tied to the concrete that's three three feet deep and it's span. We'll get there. We know how to do that, but we want to be in a different place at a different time. So, right before COVID, we could have been within the three years that the inception of the front, we would have been well over 100 people, which is unheard of. And we were at 26 people. Mm-hmm. And we are out of COVID now, looking towards the future and looking straight into what some people say, a recession. A mm-hmm. sat- and we're at 28 now. That's how quick it bounced back for us. And we could be a lot bigger right now. And we're choosing yeah. to be more selective and more genuine in who we are and what we love to be. I, me and this young man right here, we know what we are. And we're not going to lose our direction, even though people have tried to get us to lose it. But that's okay by us. Fascinating how you've described there that actually even the, the workflow process is super focused as well was that something that came about through trial and error or was it something that from the inception of the business um you you kind of thought you know what this the production work this is where this is this is bums on seats this is hours that we've just got to produce churning work let, out let me interrupt I, I, we have great respect for these guys they're 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 sure it, it takes really talented architects to do that mm-hmm. but yep. they're different they're they're made different. They're mm-hmm. inherently built different. Their experience over time is different. We would have to start our firm philosophically in a much different place. So you talk about, you know, your past and and I can talk about it, but you know, this is a profound difference about us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think when you start a firm your, the dream for that firm is, is oftentimes that the firm is a reflection of your own personality. Uh, when you work for another architect, you have little to no opportunity to craft, uh, to design to your kind of own wishes. And um, when, so when you start a firm, you have these big aspirations that you're going to be able to do any and all things. And then you have to start hiring people. And then you have to start Uh, managing clients' expectations. You have to deal with HR. You have to uh, look at the money coming in, going out, and all the romance. There still is a lot of it, but that can slip away. 
An another thing that um, if you're a designer and a true designer and that's what you want to be, the production side of things can be one of those tedious pieces that uh, is a layer past the design that um, can muddy the waters sometimes. And yeah. we, our personalities, my dad's personality, my, my own personality wants to be focused on the design side. And that's where our passion lies. So we decided to hire people that everyone back here, everybody that's in our office ha has a pen in their hand, drawing, actively inspiring the project, pen to paper, working every day to dream because we're dreamers. And that's what the people we want to surround ourselves with. And so it's just it's just about what you want to focus on, who you want to be and what you're great at. You know, um, I was one of the managing principals at HKS. We were plus 1,500 people. We had to take on every kind of job there was. And a great deal of what we did oftentimes, although we did good design, we did production for high design firms. Um, in doing that, there's great benefit. I mean, there's, a, you know, the production side in the world of economics, uh, the technical side actually is the greater the greater volume of fee on a project. It actually is the upper end because it, the duration, the risk, the liability, the delivery in the field. And, and uh, so we did a lot of that for other design firms. Uh, it's not uncommon, but it usually is. Uh, it is usually fashioned when you have a very high end design firm that's really good at what they do. And then you go ahead and find somebody that is local, connected, that can be more boots on the ground to deliver. Yeah. A product. We, we think that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I, I did want to say one more thing. Um, I, I actually worked for my dad when I was younger. I started off uh, at, at HKS. I worked in the, the pin booth. I was handing pins out to all the employees and sticky notes. And, uh, they'd come down if they needed anything. And then. I worked in the model shop for a couple of years. I was building models of, of big hotels. And it was very cool. The model shop was awesome. I loved that experience. Um, and then ultimately, when I was in school, I came down an intern and I worked on a spot while I was there, which is actually built now. And so that was my first built piece of work. And that, that's I visited a couple of times. And uh, so even from the beginning, I was kind of working with my dad and I had the opportunity to to work in a larger style firm. And uh, my experience kind of with the hierarchy of a firm, there are many different sectors in these larger firms. There's hospitality, healthcare, education. Uh, and I can't speak to all the firms. I haven't worked everywhere. But oftentimes what I find, those sectors and the leaders of those sectors kind of manage their firms underneath them as, as small architectural firms rather than, uh, what is projected to the client is everybody is working together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what you find is a series of small architectural firms under one umbrella, including a uh, AOR, an architect of record, that supports education, supports uh, sports, supports. And so uh, we are simply one of those pieces and we hire our AOR firm, and it's not that much different than what they're doing at a big firm. Um, I find it to be very similar and actually more collaborative at times because you have another person's point of view. You have somebody who's dedicated to the project on a different level, and you talk to them on a much more regular basis, in my opinion, because it's not somebody that is downstairs in a basement uh, working with no windows. Um, you have somebody who does this and this is kind of their bread and butter and this is yeah. what they're great at. So uh, we, we found it to be hugely successful. I want to get back to the core of what this discussion is. I really don't really want to focus much more on the production side. That's not what we are. What I want to do is celebrate the fact that we chose to be small. We, we touch every pro A client knows they're going to get two owners involved. We don't just download it to to a project manager, our names on this wall, on this door outside, our names on this podcast, we're going to touch 
craft, curate, mold, personality, provide the personality, the attitude, direction. And then we've got the greatest, most incredible staff back here. I, I feel like I just wish they were all standing behind us. But one of the things that I love about us, Ryan, is the computer is a tool here. It isn't yeah. the dreamer. It's not the, it's not, it, it, it's a tool. Architecture has lost its way mm -hmm. in terms of how you envision, how you use precedence from great places, how you steal from the, the greatest architects in how you craft it, mold it, provide tension between spaces. We draw freehand every day before that computer starts to define the lines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the magic is between layers of incorrect lines and your eye can see it and your heart feels it and it just feels right. A computer, you touch a button and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. There's no journey sometimes that needs to happen. So we're yeah. curators. We're uh, every project we walk into unabashed. We don't apologize for the fact that we see it as simply a white sheet of paper. Mm. And we listen how, to our client. How do you nurture these very strong, long lasting relationships with clients to such an extent that you don't need to market and that they keep coming back for more. And even better than that, they start telling their friends and their colleagues uh, or their, even their competitors. I would, I would imagine in some cases that, people find out about about you guys how do you what, what are the some of the steps that you have in really nurturing and looking after these sorts of these sorts of clients and perhaps it might be useful as well to kind of get a sense of the kind of profile of some of your clients hmm. in terms of some of the challenges that they're experiencing their financial needs and maybe a bit of the kind of personalities that perhaps you you work with big question uh, I'll start off and I'll let you I'm going to sure. only say one thing one of the greatest mm -hmm. things we do is always tell them try another architect <laughs> some of the greatest marketing we have is after we've done one, two or three projects you know everybody's going to look for something else occasionally you know you know, mm -hmm. the, the grass is always greener on the other side of the the, the, the fence we, we, we don't we don't worry about that. In fact, some of the greatest relationships we have is after two or three other architects have been involved where our relationship only becomes stronger because it's self-evident. So we, we like that. We like the fact that we have to be on our, we have to be on our game. It tests us, but uh, talk a little bit MJ about the, the, the range of our clients, you know, from developers to, you know, single owners or very personal, like shirt burgers. And, well, I feel like we have the best clients in the entire world. Uh, hospitality clients are very unique types of clients. They, uh, they are super, super well-traveled. They've seen everything. They've gone to the coolest places in the entire world. They visited the greatest hotels that out there. And um, they're also highly fashionable, highly, highly well-tailored, well-dressed, well-spoken. So you have to be at their level in a lot of ways. I'm not saying that we, we change who we are or we're anybody different. We, we naturally do that. But um, – it is fun to be in a room with them. They're vivacious. They're, they're entertainers. Mm -hmm. They're people that want to host others, make other people's lives better. That's why they're in the industry. That's why they're not doing other building types. Uh, oftentimes, 
you know, it, it is about the money, 100%. But they can make money a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And they choose to design hotels, which are extremely hard to finance, extremely hard to build, um, and have a lot of challenges that come with them. They're kind of a headache sometimes. But they are also highly, highly rewarding to be able to take your families and friends to a place to show them what you created, let them enjoy the beauties of life. It's, it's a remarkable way to kind of do business. And so our clients have a lot of challenges that come with them. Um, we have to be deeply, deeply involved and knowledgeable about the hotel industry in the world that uh, is changing every day. There's every day there's a new hotel that opens up. We're working on a, a project in, in Santa Monica and uh, me and my dad just traveled there to meet the client. And we spent the afternoon um, after the, we had kind of broke and the client had other things to do to make a point to travel to every great hotel in the area. We went and had, you know, we had a cocktail at one. We went and had appetizers at another. We went and simply just walked around and toured with the manager. Uh, we met people. We made new relationships while we were there. Um, but more importantly, we learned what the clientele is looking for in the region and what's new, exciting. Right. And it's something that we do all the time. We travel, we make a point to go somewhere new every year. And uh, oftentimes we've actually sent some of our employees to do a tour of the greatest hotels in a city. We've done Miami, we've done New York, uh, California. So it, it's, it's something that's very, very unique to our practice, I think. Um, and I want to get back to the clients. The clients are amazing. They're, allow, they're the ones that allow us to do what we do. And I think that they... I think that they feel like we give them the time of day. We listen to them. So many other firms out there are so focused on their practice and what they're trying to do it from an architectural standpoint uh, that they don't listen to the client's dreams, hopes, what they want their project to look and feel like. And um, we really we really want our clients to feel like their project comes out the way they're hoping it will. And um, it's very high touch. We, me and my dad are involved every day. I think that's something that other people don't often do. We want to be make sure that we're influencing the project on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We're drawing on the project. We're there for the client. The client calls. We pick up the phone and we say, hi, how are you doing? How are your kids? Uh, how's your health? Your dog, your dog. Uh, so we're very super personal with them, and I think that they fall in love with that. Yeah, because it's they realize that it's not just about a business to us; it's about them. Well, what what's interesting, obviously, is you're you're dealing with masters, if you like, of literally of hospitality and giving client service and giving client care and creating client experience. So, you know, that's got to be that's got to be part of what you do. You, you, you know, one of the things that you, they are well traveled, but we're, we're like the encyclopedia of, uh, we're, we're like a small bit of the internet that brings it to them. We see things on a much grander scale. I mean, we mm -hmm. travel, our work is all over this country in Europe right now. So when we visit these, we see things and we photograph it and suddenly we're this kind of incredible library of, of spaces that we can show a client. But, you know, to, it, I, I love the notion that we can extend them, bring what we've seen in the world to a well-traveled person and help them extend how they see a project. We do it with developers that are all about the dollar. We yeah. do it a, a, about we do it with families, wealthy families, and we do it with some just incredibly confidential, uber wealthy clients that see hotels as a hobby that are, mm -hmm. are a bit of their legacy. But you know, we don't we don't have a a box that our clients sit in. They're everyone. We have a young man and a woman that own a resort in Upper Upper Vermont. We have uber wealthy people. 
every one of them are people though. And it gets down to that. And our clients understand the incredibly importance of food, beverage, bars, speakeasy, entertainment, sports and game. They know about fashion. They know about sensibility, style, glamour. Mm-hmm. And, and just intimacy is in there too. I mean, we won't go there, but that that let's not forget how sexy the vibe can be in a hotel. Uh, Absolutely. Wellness today. Yeah. Don't forget the power of wellness. Mm-hmm. And we like how hotels today are becoming cl- eclectic. You don't walk into a lobby and it's just beige on beige on be- a sea of beige that's beige, 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 beige. We love that the living room is this kind of Moroccan vibe. You go into the the bar and it's high city, it's glitz and the bar backs and then the library is this cool deep wood with the books and the the wonderful soft you know it's it's about personality that that there's a journey as you move through these spaces and there's something mm-hmm. for everything but you know we we also love beautifully seamless projects so it we're, our clients are all over the map Ryan and uh, we try to help them and help ourselves how how do you attract talent you've mentioned a few times here the the extraordinary team that you have in place how did you go about building that team attracting that team and retaining the talent and i'm sure um uh, all expense well uh, i'm sure giving a lot of your team members the opportunity to go and uh, experience luxury hotels in a certain city is definitely a is is definitely uh, something that's well received well we're we're not uh Ryan, hiring is uh, is always an interesting thing. Um, our our profession and why you go to school to be an architect is all about the romance of architecture, and we have the great fortune to be a very romantic architectural firm that works on premier projects around the world. So, you know, attracting great talent is is not that big of a a challenge for us, but hiring right now in the architectural industry is challenging. Yeah. There was a lot of people that left during COVID. Um, People have kind of hunkered down. And so attracting great talent is becoming more and more challenging and finding the right people is always tough. Finding the people that want to work in an architectural firm where it is personal because some people just want to sit at their desk uh, draw straight lines every day and leave it 5:30 and not talk mm-hmm. to anybody. And uh, you know our world is becoming less and less personable. COVID has kind of taken a big bite out of um, friendships, out of face-to-face interactions, and that's what we're all about. We want to be. We actually everybody's in the office every day here. We don't have really a work-from-home policy. Um, we're so intimately involved in our work that we want our employees to be there, be able to draw with us, be able to sit down and dream with us, not across the computer, not on a phone, but right next to us. And it's important to us. And, and we try to travel to our clients when we can and get, Mm -hmm. and our clients actually prefer meeting face to face. And I think that that has been lost in our industry in a lot of ways, but Employees are are the reason we can get our work done. So it's important to find ones that are compatible, people that want to do work the way we do it. Um, And that's not always easy. So attracting the talent isn't necessarily the hard piece. The hard piece is finding like-minded people that are excited about what we do. Yeah, you know, Ryan, I, I... Tell me if I'm wrong, guys. And by the way, there's a lovely lady sitting right here by Nancora Street, Christina Strawn. She's been with me for 20 some years. You know, she's like our backbone, and she ought to be sitting here too. But uh, I, I will tell you that um, we have probably interviewed a person every week for the last 52 weeks. That's wow. how 
attractive we are. Yeah. But we've got to really be selective. This, this is a very small practice. And our culture is delicate. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the same. You've got to have a. Uh, You've got to have a variety. I, I call ourselves a, a collection of uniquely talented people of common character and common mind. Uh, we, we're fragile in terms of we don't want to lose who we are in our culture and create, you know, any division. So we're very selective. But finding talent and having talent interested in us really isn't hasn't been an issue because, as MJ says, there are very few firms like us, and, and I know that. So, but uh, keeping talent, uh, you know, there's always that opportunity that there's something out there, and people sure. see our talent as a learn uh, a, the university for hospitality. Let's call us. So we're we're prime for someone coming after our 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 employees to, and you know what. We, we, we have a very strong retention capability. People love us. They love the family thing. But we will lose a few people. Mm -hmm. And But we've already had people come back after they've left. And I think that says something. Right? Absolutely. Love it. I think that's the perfect place to conclude the conversation here. Just just to wrap up, what's, what's the rest of 2023 got in store for you guys? Mm. 20, 2023 is tremendously exciting for us. Uh, we are right now, in a, I believe, finally coming out of COVID. Yeah. And the world is a little bit on fire. Travel's on fire. People were mm -hmm. pent up in their houses for the last two, two and a half years. Uh, they traveled when they could, but now they're really allowed to travel and they're going all around the world and hotels are kind of on fire. The fashionable thing right now, people want to get out. They want to see new places and they want to be places that their friends can't go. So that means that they're trying uh, new locations around the world, new locations in America and the alternative stay is what I love. It's, it's about glamping. It's about living in a tree house in a camper van seeing the most amazing sunrise when you wake up because there's not another room around you. And yeah. we're doing a lot of that fun stuff right now. So that's exciting. But, um, you know, this is going to be a remarkable year for us. We have our, we're going to, we're going to hire more people. So we're going to kind of be busting at the seams. Our yeah. workload is going to be uh, taxing, but also in a great way because we're going to have a lot of it and it's going to be a tremendously fun year. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, 2023, in my mind, we're back. And it's nice to be back. Fully loaded, fully unbridled. And the only thing holding us back is ourselves. Our clients don't hold us back. The industry doesn't hold us back. COVID's still around, but it's, uh, you know, people feel okay with it. And uh, I'm really thrilled that this is the first year that our, you know, we've got, we have a, a group of partners that we've made all amazingly young people where they're going to get to step up. Uh, th this is the coming out party. And, yeah. I, and I love it because the last couple of years we've been, we've been, we've been bridled. We've been held back. Okay, everybody, hold on, because here we come, and we're excited about it, and uh, our work's going to be better than ever. It's going to be in places that are to die for, and uh, we just we want to thank our clients, and we just want to thank you know you know the gifts that are given to us because we're a very special, gifted, and blessed firm. So, uh, twenty twenty three, come on. Beautiful. Brilliant. Well, Mark and Nunzio, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I know it's early morning there for you guys. That was an absolutely brilliant um, glimpse into the world of your, your firm and into the world of, of catering for and nurturing amazing relationships with, with um, the hospitality sector. So thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Ryan. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.